what's up boys welcome back to another vlog as you guys can see we changed the setup at the studio a bit we added the car the porsche 718 i bought for my assistant you can check the video i posted right here i'm a bit sick sorry about that we had the event and we had a lot of shit going on and we're back to work right now I want to start this video with something I found very intriguing, I would say. Because a lot of people seem to confuse the subject. I'm not Romanian. I live in Romania. I wasn't born here. I came here seven years ago. I'm not Romanian. Not 1% of me is Romanian. I just live here. Because I see a lot of people confuse me and say he's Romanian. Just had to state this. And... Uh, let me put this on mute and uh, one thing I saw a friend of mine tweet today is his tweet was basically uh, that he's from Romania he's Romanian and every single hate comment he gets is from Romanians and uh, I was checking my YouTube as well my the TikTok my VA runs for me and all the other platforms since I started this whole personal brand thing, literally every single comment, every single hate comment is from a Romanian. It's from a Romanian name or the Romanian flag, a Romanian something. Every single hate comment. No other race, no other country hating other than these people. But I mean, I can understand it. Like, uh, not a long time ago, their country was being ruled by Ceausescu and they used to wake up at 5 a.m. and go uh, stand in lines to get bags of rice and like if they see someone young, successful, supercars, multi-billionaire, they're going to get pissed. Like uh, uh, what was it called? The dictatorship and the communism still lives here lives inside them but uh, yeah this whole personality this whole being bitter and just hating is, it's a very common trait here don't get me wrong i'm not saying all of the romanian population is like this i have very very good and close romanian friends i have romanian people that work for me as well but 98% of them are just like this. Like they would rather damage their own business and affect their own shit just to make sure that the other person is not doing well. Like they have this kind of bitter, salty mentality. But yeah, it's fine. Who cares anyways? I have the cars, they don't. I want to start today's subject with stress tolerance this is going to be our subject of the day and uh, another question which I get asked a lot and I got asked at the event as well is how do you always manage to go one step further one step further when it comes to business and making money and I'm going to answer this right now for me stress was always the best motivator it was always stress and putting tension and weight over my shoulders because once you're comfortable in your position this is going to be your downfall like for me someone in my position right now all these cars the real estate the everything i can just sit and chill and do nothing but i always put more over my shoulders i'll give you an example i think i was 19 or 20 when i bought my first ever apartment investment property and uh it was i talked about this before it was 100k and the down payment was 35k all the money i had was 35k back then that was all the money i had i put down the 35k and i had i think it was january and i had till October to make 65k otherwise I'll lose the 35k I'll lose the apartment and I ended up making a lot more than that 
And this is my own, from my own personal experience and from my own life, this is what keeps me motivated and it keeps me like going and pushing more, pushing more, pushing more. Same thing happened right now with the Ferrari SF90. I was telling the guys at the event, I went, I paid down, I think I put down 30%. The car was is 535K euros with uh, VAT included. So it's like 600K USD. I put down 35%. And uh, I receive a Q4, estimated time of arrival is Q4 uh, 2024. And I have to make the rest till then. I mean, I can just be a pussy and sell the McLaren or sell one car and go pay for the SF90, but that would be the pussy route. That would be me being a coward and not actually going through the stress and putting the weight on my shoulders and having to do it because how I see life and making money is a lot of people see money as in, yeah, I bought this, I can sell it and then I can buy another thing. I never look at life this way. I used to look at it that way a long time ago, but I found out that it wasn't a healthy way to live because you tie your whole you tie your whole existence into a couple of objects and they become your, like, they become you. And you become that object instead of you becoming the person that prints and makes and produces money all the time to buy even more and more and more. This was what helped me surpass my competition is the fact that I always think that yeah take it back to zero you know like new car i have to make the money for the new car i don't use the money from my savings account use i don't use the money from my crypto it's always new money new money new money making new money to buy new stuff because if you become comfortable and you're like yeah i have this car right here i can sell it or trade it into another car it becomes too easy and you you're still stuck at the same level you're still stuck at the money you paid for this car i'm not saying take this advice about cars from me like it's obviously stupid to keep on buying more cars and not trading them because they depreciate but like if you think about it everything depreciates on life you depreciate i depreciate everything depreciates on life you get older you lose value you only live once bro so by putting the pressure on yourself and knowing that you have a deadline you have to make that amount of money till then you're going to work like an animal you're going to be a workhorse you're going to have to make it it's like it's a lot different than just trading something it's like always something new something new you have to you're obligated this is what i'm trying to explain to you guys this is what made me get to, to the level where i am right now it's always yeah down payment for this i have to make the money to close it and i always did it i always made it happen because the risk when you're comfortable the risk would be just like you're not losing money you just don't buy it but with what I'm explaining to you guys right now, the risk would be actually losing money or losing the thing you want that you already paid for. So it's going to hurt and it's going to make you work 10 times more. This strategy can be interpreted in many other ways where some people can just go crazy and go ham and no still like i want you guys to remain logical when it comes to taking decisions like this the second subject i want to talk to you guys about online money the easiest three things to sell in this world are dreams pussy and religion these are the easiest three things you can sell. I'm not going to go into the last two options I gave you guys. I'm going to talk about the first option, which is dreams. What is a dream and why is it easy to sell? Everyone has dreams. There's not one single person on this planet that doesn't dream. 
and it's extremely easy to sell. I'll give you guys the perfect scenario for anyone that wants to make money. Let's take crypto or Forex, for example. You sit on your computer, watch charts, you get a signal, buy, make money. This is a dream. Some people can argue with me and say, oh yeah, but like I analyze the charts, I can do this, so oh, two indicators of correction. No, <laughs> no, not your charts, not your indicators, not your gurus, not anyone can predict how the market goes. So this is why I consider those business types to be selling a dream. And this is why you see a lot of these crypto, forex, signal gurus make a lot of money because it, what they do is extremely easy. They find poor people, prey, I would say, and they take money from them and they basically sell them the dream. Yeah, buy my course, you'll get the signals, <clears throat> put the money in this and you're going to make more money. For anyone, like this is the easiest and like this is the best ever scenario possible but this doesn't work bro especially in 2024 right now in the world we're living in everything is becoming harder everything is becoming more more and more brutal and making money is the online money space is kind of closing in this is not how the world works bro if you have this mentality where yeah i'll just i want to take this easy way you're going to have a hard time, my friend. Another subject I want to talk about is the spending money part. Like, I see a lot of people on Twitter talk about, oh, I make X amount, six figures, seven figures, millions, hundreds of thousands. And like all they post is numbers, charts, numbers, maybe vacations and that's it. And like no very few people have literally solid proof that they actually make money. And I talk to a lot of people that do these types of businesses and I ask them like, bro, where does the money go to? Like I make money. So McLaren, 718, Wraith Black Badge, Eurus Mansory, SF90 Spider, houses, real estate. If you're actually making that much money, where is the money going to? What are you doing with the money? Because you talk about all these numbers, all these charts. Where's the money, bro? Uh, vacations. Traveling. I travel as well, bro. I travel first class everywhere. Paying for two people all the time. Me and my assistant. Or, I don't know, the best ever hotels, best ever resorts. I can put examples here. Fucking six senses at the Seychelles, like 3K a night. Maldives, fucking 2.5k a night, water villa, first class flights. I still have money to pay for cars and show actual proof. But <laughs> where's your money, bro? I don't know. Yeah, jumping over this silly subject, I just wanted to state this here because I actually find it very funny how a lot of people on Twitter, even on YouTube, they claim those numbers and like, Show actual proof, bro, that you're making money. Please show us, bro, at least one car. I'm not saying try to be on my level five fucking cars. At least one, bro. One car. One. Yeah. Going back to the subject of why being salty and bitter is never a good idea. I'll give you guys an example. I posted this picture on Twitter with these four cars and as you guys can see i don't know if you can see in the video we have 96 hdi on the 718 97 hdi on uh, the euros 98 hdi on the mclaren 99 hdi on the rolls royce these are the number plates my name is hadi so hdi comes from hadi bro i post the picture just nothing, just a picture of the cars with the number plates. And this guy comments, I know a rental when I see one. Who the fuck would rent 
four cars. Why would I rent four cars at the same time and put them here? And you can see them in every single video. And what are the fucking odds that all the cars have my name and they're on in chronological order? I responded, I usually don't respond to these people, but I responded to that guy with a picture of all the keys because when you rent a car, they give you one key, they don't give you the two keys. So I posted the picture of the eight keys of these cars and uh, as like a proof of ownership. And the guy then comments, oh, oh, what about the house? And that made me think for anyone that's going into the whole personal brand route, taking videos, talking, being more open, you can never please everyone. Like it's literally impossible. People that are bitter and salty are impossible to please. Like you just have to ignore these people. And I was thinking about this last night. Like I'll give you guys an example, Jake Paul. Jake Paul is extremely powerful right now. Stupid rich, influence, money, clout, everything, you name it. He's young as well. The amount of hate that guy used to have before is insane. He still gets hate till now. Oh, fake boxer. Oh, you fight all people. Oh, but like, he doesn't care. It becomes, it's part of the game, you know? For me, it was a like little tiny shock because I wasn't used to showing my face on camera. And like, I literally started this whole video YouTube thing a month ago, a month and a half ago. And this is still all new to me, but I'm getting a lot of nice texts and thank you messages from people that say, oh, your advice is actually changing my life. I read your Telegram uh, posts every day. Any of you guys, any of you guys watching this that don't know, I have a free Telegram channel where I post my ideas and everything literally daily. We're close to 10,000 subscribers on the channel, so you can check uh, my bio on YouTube or the bio on this video and you can join the channel. It's 100% free. You can see everything I post there daily. And at the same time, I'm not getting hate messages. Even when I'm going out in Romania, people are recognizing me. I had a couple of guys come take pictures with me, say that they watch my content, they love what I do. But I'm seeing hate comments here and there. Cope. It's basically cope. It's not like hate. I mean, cope also comes from hate as well. But it's basically what I talked about on my Telegram channel literally yesterday. It's people that they can't fathom. They can't take in. They can't digest the idea that someone is young, strong, rich, does whatever the fuck he wants, travels whenever he wants. Like they can't understand, they can't digest the idea that someone like this exists and they are miser miserable and they go to normal jobs and they're poor. But instead of being like these people, this is going to be the advice about this subject. Instead of being like these people, because I was in that position, bro. Four or five years ago, I was broke as fuck. You can watch my video of about, it's called Who is Dr. Hadi? I think it was my second or third ever YouTube video where I talked about my come up and how I started making money and how I got to the position I am right now. I was like that. I was dirt broke. Fucking dorm rooms, working as a delivery boy. But I never, ever looked at someone rich and said, oh, this guy must be doing this. Oh, this guy must be unhappy. Oh, this guy. I never did that, bro. Whenever I looked at someone rich, I was like, ah, oh, nice. Like, what did he do? How can I become like him? It, 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 these things, you're born with this. This is the sad part, is you're either born with that type of personality or you're born just salty and bitter. And I hate to break it to you guys, but salty and bitter individuals never make it in life. Never. Like your chances are zero because once you start making money, you're going to face a lot of levels, I would say, where you have to talk to more people. You have 
staff, you have to manage a lot of businesses. Your personality plays a very big role when you start making more money. More. And when I'm talking about more money, I'm not talking like 100K or 1 mil, like a lot of money. When you want to go to that level where you can afford multiple cars, do whatever the fuck you want, you're going to face a lot of issues where your personality plays a major role. And if you're born bitter, salty and shit, you're going to have a lot of issues, my friend. You need to try to change your personality a bit. Another extremely important subject, which will end the vlog talking about this subject, is going to be who you surround yourself with, the people you surround yourself with. One thing that helped me a lot and made me kind of go to even more levels financially and everything was the people I had next to me. And what I mean by that is a lot of people think that if you're good at a certain thing, let's say you're very good at a certain thing, it's impossible to find someone better than you. And this is extremely false. For me, I had the situation where I was extremely good at something. I found someone, I taught him what I know. He joined our private community. You can see the video about him in the event video as well. I taught him what I know and he became better than me at that thing. And he started explaining to me and all the coaching members even more things because he just invested more time and energy and he just was better, you know? And he took it to other levels. And this can apply to literally anything in life. Don't be close-minded. Don't be the type of person that thinks that if you're making enough money or with something, having another person try it out and helping you out is not a good idea because you never know once you meet someone that can literally take your whole business to another level. What we did at the event last weekend, I'm still shocked till now of how good it was. The vibe was amazing. Everyone was having a good time. Everyone was so open about everything, just saying, oh, I do this, I do that. Exchanging value, becoming friends. When I was first starting out with online money, I used to be very like closed about it, you know? Just sitting at home doing my own thing and that kind of limited me to a certain level like I plateaued at one point and I remained there and then after meeting new people talking to new people starting to finding people that run the same business I do everything started to change and moral of this is going to be like don't be a limited don't be a close-minded individual. Don't be like, oh, I know that because let's say I'm good at this business. I meet someone extremely good at this and at another business. We open something together, more money for him, more money for me. I introduce him to my business. He introduces me to his business. This is how life works. There's not one single company that's on its feet from one person. There's not one single team that works just because one person is working. You need to expand. You need to meet new people. You need to just be like that. Be over there in everyone's face. Hey, my name is, I don't know. I do this. What do you do? The more you do this, the more you strengthen your character, you build more connections, the more powerful and more money you're going to end up making. As simple as that. Hopefully everyone watched this video till the end and uh, see you boys next time.